Mississippi, the heart of America. It was one of the final stops of the 1961 civil rights freedom ride against segregation. Much of the state is made up of small rural communities struggling to survive. After slavery was abolished, jobs in the cotton fields were replaced by industrial work in factories. But these days, that is scarce. One person is dead, five others are injured after a shooting with multiple shooters at a street festival in Mississippi. Now to the deadly shooting spree shattering the holiday weekend in Mississippi. Police say at least eight people were killed in several locations. It apparently started as a family dispute and ended with eight people dead, including two boys. Two and Walmart employees are dead after a disgruntled former employee opened fire in the South Haven store. At least seven people left injured after a mass shooting at a Mississippi nightclub. Mississippi is now the poorest state in America. It also has some of the most lenient gun laws and one of the highest death rates in the country. Mississippi does not require that a person pass a criminal background check before buying a firearm from an unlicensed seller nor does the state require a person obtain a permit for a gun. In 1980, I lost my 25-year-old mother, Sharon Neal, to an act of domestic violence that involved a gun. And the person who took her life um, stole us, stole her from us, my three brothers and I. And, uh, you know, that traumatizes you forever. Lorenzo Neal is a pastor at the church in Jackson, Mississippi. He calls himself a gun violence prevention advocate. Places of worship have long been seen as a target for gun violence since the attack in South Carolina in 2015. 21-year-old white supremacist Dylan Roof opened fire at the Charleston church, killing nine people. The biggest push for me to get involved was in 2015 after the shooting at Emmanuel AME Church, her mother Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The pastor is a colleague of mine, brother in ministry, and he and eight others lost their lives. There are so many more like myself who've been impacted by gun violence, who are still grieving, still traumatized, whether they lost someone uh, because uh, they threw gun homicide or they lost someone through gun suicide, or they lost a child through an unintentional shooting. Those stories sometimes get lost in the headlines and definitely lost in statistics. Pastor Neal says that there is an epidemic of gun violence in America, and he feels it is his role to do something. So it is surprising to me that the pastor himself owns a gun. <laughs> More than one, I, a couple actually, yeah. So please explain it for me. You are against gun violence, but you possess several guns. So in America, it's not about being for or against guns, I guess, right? Yes, it's not about that. I, and I think the narrative, you know, you hear the word gun control. I do not like that because it gives off this very, very vague uh, sentiment. We need to control guns. What do you mean by control guns? Uh, most people are responsible gun owners. We pass legislation to ensure that persons who want to be responsible gun owners can do so. We've got that on the books, you know. The problem is keeping hands out of the persons who should not have them. Keeping. Uh, guns out of the hands of persons who should not have them. But when a kid comes up to you and says that he's scared of guns and 
if you were to know that you own guns yourself, what would you say to that kid? How would you explain that? Same way my grandfather explained to me. There's nothing wrong with the gun itself if you're responsible. You, know, you have to, it's about education from, from the jump. You, know, you don't disenfranchise gun ownership because of gun violence. Lorenzo's argument, which seems distinctly American to me, is that it's not guns that are the problem, it's the people carrying them. So I feel like it's only fair if I explore this point more. And what better place to do that than at a gun range? My name's Chuck Boyer, and I'm an instructor here at the range by Jimmy Primos. Always be sure of your target and what's behind it, because a 9mm pistol will shoot through a wall and hit an unintended target on the other side. This hand goes right here, up against this hand, and goes in this, on this side of the grip of the gun. So the two hands yeah, merge here. Yeah, in this, and then you put pressure with this hand and hold, like this. When someone buys a gun from here, let's say that they're not well trained, but they like end up in a situation where they have to defense, defend themselves. Like how much of a training should well, it, a person it, it make before they the, go it, on the street it, and It use depends it. on the individual person. We encourage them to come in and shoot a box of shells, you know, 50 rounds, 100 rounds, you know, at least once a month. Not only in Mississippi, but also across the country, there's not a restriction as to how much well-trained you have to be before you can possess a gun, right? No, I'm not aware. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware. I mean, it's just like Self no, different buying a, no different than buying a, uh, getting a driver's license. After the safety demonstration, Chuck is showing me how to handle a firearm. Three and four. Fingers here, put the sights on the target, take the slack out, press. Okay, he's got a loaded gun on the table. I hit the target. No nation has embraced a firearm like the United States. Nearly half of all civilian owned guns in the world belong to Americans. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, is seen as a fundamental right which, for many, can't be questioned. But the widespread availability of guns comes at a cost. There hasn't been a single week in the US in 2022 without a mass shooting, where four or more people are injured or killed. It was considered an unalienable right that was created up under the Articles of Confederation when this country was first created. And it also goes back to the fact that before even it was made a constitutional right, that Americans own guns for protection. I've come to meet Larry McLooney, who lives in Greenwood, Mississippi. He's an historian and teacher in the region, who has also offended many by publicly defending the Confederate flag. What played the biggest role in the way that you're looking at American history, the way you've been looking at it? Uh, of course, I have to say, for me, it would be um, the war between the states. As uh, they teach in public school the Civil War uh, because the United States was not a uni unified country until after that war. The, the country, the colonies were all frontier and uh, very little law. And it was up to the citizens at that time 
to defend themselves, to uh, enforce the law, and uh, uh, protect themselves for, from the Indians, uh, to also provide food, hunting. Uh, guns were in short supply. So when you acquire one of these weapons, uh, it, it's, it becomes very personal. It's uh, uh, not only providing food for the family, but it also provides safety for your family and helps enforce the laws. As we are in Mississippi, a New York gun law is struck down by the U.S. Supreme Court that placed restrictions on carrying a concealed handgun outside the home. It's the widest expansion of gun rights in a decade. How can you stop someone, let's say a 19, 20-year-old morally declining man or a woman, from legally acquiring a weapon, an assault rifle, and going to killing spree in Mississippi? I, I don't see where you can legally. Uh, if a person wants to buy a gun, they're going to buy a gun, even in Europe. But I can't show off with my weapon in Berlin. No. Or I can't show off with my massive rifle in London. Right. Why should I be able to show off with my weapon in Jackson or Greenwood? Well, or it's the right of the American citizens. I mean, the right, according to 21st century interpretation of the Constitution, to bear arms. Militia groups have been making a resurgence over the last few years and whether they are left or right wing, they all share a love of guns. My final stop is Brookhaven, Mississippi to meet members of a gun club who have traveled here from Texas. They talk about how trust in the justice system, what well, the justice system needs to do its job. Black power? Black power. Black power. Um, the black militia have gathered in front of the courthouse as they've just gone in to speak with the district attorney because they want to apply some pressure as a young black uh, teenager boy was chased and shot at in January by two white people. So they are here with their semi-automatic rifles to protest. <laughs> For over 400 years, uh, suffered at the hands of white supremacy. Um, one of the original laws that were passed here uh, in the United States, before it was even states, when they were just colonies, was that black people couldn't own firearms. Um, and they did that intentionally so we couldn't revolt, uprise, um, and be free. See, the Second Amendment is to protect the First Amendment, but you have to remember, our ancestors didn't have those rights, but we do now. And so you're not going to just brutalize us and just think it's okay. Those days are over. That's right. That's and we'll right. go as many places as we have to to get the message out. So yes, we're out here with rifles, but I bet you won't see anybody out here getting brutalized. Both the white people and the black people, mm -hmm. it could turn into, it could have a spillover effect and it could turn into, you know, shootouts on the streets between the two communities. Well, what's, what's the alternative? Buffalo. The alternative is Buffalo. If we don't arm ourselves, they'll slaughter us. Those white supremacists, we know. Look at South Carolina in the church. Look at Buffalo. I mean, the list goes on. Like, how many times do we have to get slaughtered for people to understand nobody's coming to save us? Ten people were killed when a gunman opened fire. This was at a supermarket in a largely black neighborhood in Buffalo. It's very difficult to report the details of this Texas school shooting without feeling the outrage and frustration and the deep, deep sadness we cover these stories again and again and again and again, and you all know how it goes. I don't know what to do, man. I just, she didn't deserve that. No. She didn't. When are we gonna do something? I'm tired, I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences. More than 18,000 people have died at the hands of a gun in the U.S. in the first six months of 2022. Extending or limiting the right to carry a gun is a political battle in which neither side seems to be able to agree on. The pro-gun lobby believes the answer is more armed security. They believe that anti-gun legislation is an infringement on freedom. But left or right, the conversation here is no longer about taking guns away or not. 
the debate is a tool for lawmakers to gain votes on the ballot. Yet away from the back and forth of government, this issue affects all Americans. It's about life or death.